Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaias here from the Automator, and we just were really excited that V2 is now the official version of AutoHotKey. Uh, we were trying to, you know, VS Code is an amazing editor, but boy, it's it's a lot, right? So we wanted something a little more lightweight. Site for AutoHotKey is a great editor. It actually is configured for V1 and V2. It's just a little tricky in setting it up. So we thought we'd make a little video here walking through both how you can do that, and if you have it, want it installed in a separate location, we're going to show you how you can make a minor tweak to it. Exactly. So now if you go to the page, we're going to have a prayer link that will take you here, uh, which is the Cypher Hotkey download page. You have the two options of downloading the installer in case that you want to have that as your main editor, or you can have a portable version that does not mean that, uh, that, that it's not installed. The only thing is that um, there is a little change that we have to do if you have the portable version that uh, for it to work properly with the changes that we're doing. So what we're going to do, I just downloaded both. I'm going to go through the installation, which doesn't take long. Just go ahead and click install. Um, depending on what you want to do, you select your options. I don't want to do that right now. But notice that it's installed in AutoHotKey, where, where AutoHotKey is installed. This is very important. Very. The site folder, the site editor must be where AutoHotKey is located at for this to work. Again, there are there is a workaround that we're going to talk about because if you have a portable version, right. you might not want it anywhere where AutoHotKey is. But again, if you just want it to work out of the box, this is the way to go. It has to be which, where AutoHotKey is installed. Which for me is, and I like the portable version, but I, I want all my stuff under Dropbox, not under my right. program files, especially because right. also you can't save stuff directly under your program files. And anyway, that's why I'm like, yeah, right. that's... So now you hit install, this shouldn't take long, and it, of course, doesn't. The editor is there. It gives you some options here. I don't want auto backups. Everything is good. You cannot say, you can, you can, as soon as you select, you can close because they're saved. This update button is not to save your stuff, it's for check for updates. So that's, uh, that threw me off a little bit, but that's it. You're good to go. Now, here's the thing. This is already, is defined automatically for V1. So this is V1 code. Now, if you installed it correctly in the correct location, when you hit here, it changes platforms. And basically, I would have changed the word platform for version. So what you're doing is switching versions of AutoHotKey. So now you can choose between V2 here or V1 up here. And again, what I was saying is for this to show up, it has to be in the auto hotkey folder. If you're not there, this will just show one that says default and that's it. So keep that in mind. If you only see one option, it's just because you didn't have it in the correct location. Now, if I switch to V2, you notice that the highlight turns red because that, that is invalid V2 code, which is perfect. That means that I did switch to the V2 highlighter. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and create a new file. Close this up. Let's start with V1, the normal one. I have message box and let's say AHK path. Very good. So I have it. It's being highlighted. If I click run, um, first it will ask me to save it because I have to save stuff first. I will say test.hk. You have to put the extension here whenever you save it. It will not do it for you automatically. So be sure to remember to do that for now. And notice that as this is V1, it is not giving me a path, it's just giving me the text. So I'm sure that I'm running V1, perfect. If you switch to V2 and you try to run, it's gonna keep running, oh, it is actually you know working what? fine. You know yeah. what is this, I'll bet you, the install version is doing the switching fine, it's the- is the portable, portable version. Yeah. yeah, okay. Because in the portable version, I had to do a, an additional step, yeah, well, which is what we're going to talk about now, yeah. now. But in general, notice that as soon as you switch to a different one, now you, instead of having the actual text, what you're getting is the path. So perfect. That's how you switch between B1 you, and B2. Do me a favor real quick. Close site now and reopen it. Right. Let's reopen it now. So it, let's go to with, the desktop. With any luck. It, it should will... keep whatever you had before, right? right. Right. So now if I did that and I check on my path, it is remembering what I had. So okay. that's like your default 
hey, this is what I want to be using. It remembers. Right. Great. That's it. Perfect. Everything good. Now. All right. Let's jump into the portable version. Right. So now if we go to the portable version that I downloaded, you will notice site here. I just double click on it. And if we go to the uh, platforms here, you will notice that only one is selected. Again, it's because site is not in the program files out of hotkey folder. If you put it there, it would automatically detect them. But if you don't want to have it there, you can just configure it. The only thing that we have to do now is here in the same toolbar, you right click, use the open platform properties. And this is the part that we have to modify. There's two sections. This here talks about the menu, this menu that you're looking here. This is the one that actually gives you the menu items. And here at the bottom, we have a section that tells the script when you click on run, which uh, path you're going to use. So what we're going to do is change these variables to instead of having variables there, having my actual path where auto hotkey is. And it could be anywhere you have auto hotkey installed. In my case, it would be program files auto hotkey. And I could just grab that path here, copy it. And now what we're going to do is just search and replace, just select it, control H to get them all and replace them with this. Uh, replace all, you're good. And here, wherever you find the dollar sign, the parentheses and the word auto hotkey there, all of it, control H, all of that is what I'm going to replace. I'm going to put it here, replace them all, save my file. And now I have to right click here and click on reload platforms so that uh, site for our hotkey reads this file again. After I do that, what is going to happen now is that my platforms are going to be shown up in here as we discussed before. And if I open up the test file once more, which is in the desktop, if I run it with the default is not going to work by default right now, but if you select V1 and run it, it's going to give you a V1 thing because that's a normal text, right. right? But if we switch to V2, it is going to give me, let me see, hold on. If I switch to V2 and I click on run, it should give me the path instead of just the word. So as you can tell, I can switch back and forth between the versions now with the platform, but it was just a simple uh, search and replace on the properties for the platforms. So this should be good. You can do the same if you have the installed version and auto hotkeys installing a different path. It doesn't matter, but it's just um, a little simple replace there. Yeah, and we don't love hard coding that, but at the same time, sometimes you want this in a different location and this is how you can right. easily do that. So uh, right. thank you, Finks. If you've enjoyed this video, please like the video. It really helps us out, get more views. And uh, let us know if you're switching to V2 now that it's the official version. Uh, we're, we're definitely going to very soon be doing our videos all in v2 i think and you know maybe yeah. occasionally something in v1 but that's it thanks for watching